Historically, we've seen the interest rates go up in 2016 after Donald Trump was elected and also in 2019 on January 1st. We're right in the eclipse of historically when interest rates will change. Let's take a look at an interview I had with Dustin Owen, the regional vice president, on what he projects uh, and prospects for what's going to happen in 2021, not only with the local economy, the national economy, global, and how it's going to impact your interest rate as a homeowner or future home buyer. Take a look. Yeah. So the, the speculation conversation from a really smart guy who news for a really long time, um, historically, we've seen interest rates increase after presidential election, which we're writing back in. And mm -hmm. historically, I think the last time we saw it above 5% was in January 2019, if memory serves. Yeah. Um, like a minute. For like a minute yeah. and a half. Your your memory would serve better than mine. I literally can't remember what was yesterday or what or what's tomorrow. Um, I do know that when Trump was elected in 2016, we saw interest rates spike. A little bit of that was a knee jerk reaction, right? Though we also saw a, a a surge in the Dow Jones Industrial. That was a bit of a knee jerk reaction. People were maybe a little bit overly optimistic about what a uh, um, uh, environment would look like with with less regulation, um, but uh, what we will see going forward is we will see rates go up, right? All they things have to. considered, they have they, to go up. Well, yeah, they they have to. And by the way, we want them to go up. They're down right now because we're in a bit of an economic crisis. Like we don't want to stay or prolong any type of economic crisis. And in fact, just this week alone interest rates have spiked and they spiked um, one because the election results are deemed to be a little bit pro-economy um, and more importantly on Monday it was announced that there's a potential for a legit COVID vaccine and then on Tuesday it was announced that there's a potential for a legit COVID treatment well the market hears that you got to think the market, when we talk about the market, we're talking about stocks and bonds for the most part. And the market, to me, my opinion, it operates like a 15-year-old schoolgirl. Very <laughs> emotional. Very knee-jerk reaction. Um, you know, many times it overreacts. But like a 15-year-old schoolgirl, it will take a deep breath, take a step back, and eventually the dust will settle. Uh, so what we saw is we, if you tune in, you've seen the stock market two weeks in a row do really well, right? It did really well towards the end of um, last week after the election results were a little bit more clear. Yep. Uh, Friday, we saw the Dow Jones Industrial actually take a hit or drop a little bit. And that was because of the fear, again, a 15-year-old school girl, right? So the fear that um, the election was going to be opposed and end up in the court system. And, you know, the market doesn't like uncertainty. The, the market doesn't like strife. Well, um, but the market loves knowing that things are going to start heading back in a positive direction. So anytime you see stocks go up, you're going to see mortgage rates go down. That's about 88% accurate. When stocks go up, rates go down. Uh, I'm so sorry. I said that wrong. When stocks go up, rates go up. Okay. When stocks go up, the price of bonds goes down. And because the price of bonds has a uh, inverse relationship with the, with the interest rate, when we see bond prices go down, we see rates go up. So when you see stocks go up, you all see rates go up. And the reason why is that let's say there was $10,000 for Rick Fileset to invest in the market. Well, when the economy is bad, Rick's going to be like, ooh, I don't know if I want to go in stocks. Stocks are too volatile. Let me go park them into bonds because bonds are more of a safe haven or a guarantee. When that happens, those price of bonds go up, the rates go down. But if Rick Bosley sees that, wait a minute, unemployment is getting lower and we have a COVID vaccine around the corner, we have a COVID treatment around the corner, I don't want my money sitting in bonds at 2% rate of return. Let me go invest that money in the stock market where I can try to achieve an 8 or 10% rate of return. So ultimately, 2021 is projected to be a 
um, recovery year from the from an economic standpoint. And because it's a recovery year, we're going to see the stock market perform really well. Therefore, all that money that's been parked in bonds is going to be pulled out of bonds. It's going to be shoved into the stock market because people don't want to make 2%. They want to make 8 or 10%. Sure. And, the, and the market's going to have to, uh, the bond market's going to have to uh, adjust. And the way that the bond market will adjust, it'll lower its prices on its bonds. It'll increase its yield. We'll see rates go from, let's just say they're at three right now. They'll go to three and a half. But I have great news for you. People a year ago or two years ago would kill for a three and a half percent interest rate. No doubt. You know, so yes, they're going to go up, but they're still going to stay historically low. Maybe not 2.625 low or 2.875 low, but 3.375 to 3.75, that's almost like free money. Like that's still fantastic. Massively leveraged. Well, in my first house in 2005, great time to buy, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I bought points down to get to six. Yeah. It is just what it was. Um, and in the late 1980s, uh, I wasn't selling houses back then, but I understand rates were around the 18 to 20%. Yeah. Yeah. That, that would have been probably closer to the early 80s to mid 80s. But okay. yes. Uh, yeah. So the late 80s, they were, they were getting closer to nine. So it's all um, relative there as, as what we're going. Uh, I love that what because you, you just taught me that with the stock and the interest rates correlate, the mm -hmm. bonds and the interest rates are opposite. Yep. Is either one a leading indicator or does it happen simultaneously? Simultaneously. Now, eventually, with with uncertainty, right? So, like, what is uncertainty? So, uncertainty. Mm -hmm. We've seen a lot of it over the past um, at least three to four years, if not five to ten years. Uncertainty would be wow, our economy is doing really well, but Russia and Ukraine aren't getting along. Well, so unrest in a geopolitical standpoint could actually mean that our stock market's doing well, but also our interest rates are going down because Europeans are allowed to invest their money into the U.S., right? China invests a ton of money into the U.S., especially the, the debt markets. Well, if there's political unrest in Europe or in Asia, we could see an influx of cash into our debt markets, which would drive bond prices up, rates down. But at the same time, the Dow Jones Industrial, our stock market, our, our leading you know, indicator for, for stocks, or the S&P, could also be, be doing gangbusters. So, And there's also a time both could be down because people could get so worried about what's going on in the U.S. Thanks for watching the Orlando Homeowner Show. I trust you have some great knowledge. And if you're looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate anywhere in the country, we can connect you. And anywhere in Central Florida, we can work with you and be happy to do so. If you like this interview, make sure you take a look at my links above. You'll see two other interviews I had with Dustin Owen talking about what and why things happened in 2020 the way they did according to COVID and the interest rates and the government, uh, as well as if you are a forbearance, what does that really mean and how can you protect yourself from being gone? Thanks for tuning in. We'll join you soon. Make Make sure you like, subscribe, and comment if you want to see more of like these. And join us every Wednesday at 12.15 live for our weekly interview for the Orlando Homeowner Show. Take care.